Hi there, fifth grade horn players. So this is a video of me taking you through some rhythm review. Um, just, it's a good thing to practice every once in a while is to just focus on one aspect of our playing. And rhythm is a really important part of our playing. So rhythm, remember, is the long and short notes. Sorry, I'm setting my case down here. Um, it's when you have eighth notes or quarter notes or half notes. It's the length of your notes. That's what rhythm is. We have a tendency of focusing so much on our pitch, especially as horn players, you know, am I high enough, am I too high, am I too low, that sometimes we forget that rhythm is actually more important, especially when you're playing with a big group of people, okay? So what we're going to do is go to the very, very back of your book on page 44 is actually where we're going to be. So this is way near the back. Um, this is a page literally called Rhythm Study. So perfect. We're going to do several on this page. Um, not all of them, but we're going to do um, a few. And the first one we're going to do is number 21 on that page 44. So if you look at page uh, 44, number 21, you'll see a bunch of notes and they're all the ones beamed together. Now, my first question is, is what are those notes called? Hopefully, you just in your head said eighth notes, okay? Here again, why are they called eighth notes? Well, if you count how many of, how many of those notes are in a measure, you'll get eight. That's probably why they're called eighth notes. There went my pencil. Uh, but yeah, eighth notes are just eight of them happen in a measure. So number 21, before we play each and one of these, um, we're going to clap them, and then we're going to play them on our horn just using a random note to practice it. So here's 21, chilling on eighth notes. We would go when we count it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. We use those ands because there are eight notes, but there's only four beats. So one and two and three and four and. Those and notes happen in between the beats. So we don't want to say a number. We use that and to take their place, okay? Now, let's just play a bunch of Fs. Just that rhythm. Let me find my F. So just a bunch of F's on eighth notes. Number 21. Ready? On an F. Here we go. This is where that tonguing thing is so important. If you have that many eighth notes in a measure, you have to make sure you're tonguing. Otherwise, the notes just all mush together. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, let's do another one. Here again, we'll clap and then we'll play. So number 27, if you go further down that page, you'll see number 27. It has two eighth notes to start. And then it has what kind of notes? So it's a solid uh, hole filled in with the line. Hopefully you said quarter notes, okay? So when I clap 27, we would go one and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. Four. So here again, the eighth notes, we use that one and two and blah, blah, blah. The quarter notes just line up right on the number. Okay? Let's play all of number 27 on an A. Why not? So here's all A's, number 27. One and two. Make sure you're tonguing. So making sure the eighth notes go faster than the quarter notes. A lot of times kids just make everything the same length. If you make all those notes the same length, by the way, you would have one and two, three, four. If you, instead of going one and, if you go one, two, three, four, five, you now have five beats in that measure, which means you're not playing with the whole big group band anymore. Especially when you're playing with a group, you have to make sure your eighth notes go faster. That's the whole moral of this uh, video. Number 30 is the next one we'll do. So we'll take a look at it for a second. You you'll see you have quarter notes and you have eighth notes. So number 30, we would clap. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. So quarter, eighth, 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 quarter. Quarter, eighth, 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 quarter. Okay? Now, on the number 30, let's just play E flat. Why not? I was right. So E flat. That's our pitch. Number 30. All E flat. Make your second finger. Ready? Number 30. Rhythm practice. Go. That's all it is. Okay. All right. Let's do one more. Let's do number 35 on that page. Okay. 
when we throw rests in, a lot of times we make mistakes because we fill in the rests. We just, they don't matter. Let me skip them and go to the next thing. Rests are incredibly important, guys. You have to make sure you count them and pay attention to them. You have to keep track of how long they last, okay? They get beats also, okay? So on this lovely 35, let's play Ds, okay? But before we play it, let's clap it. So 35, we've got two eighth notes, and then make sure you have a rest. Make sure you count those rests. They're full beats. So 35, we'll go one and rest, rest, four and one and rest, rest. Four, eight. So we're gonna play that all on D's, but make sure it's D, D, rest, rest. Those quarter rests get full beats. Don't, don't rush them, okay? Here's my D's. There's D, one and two, 35. One, two. One, two. Now, you can obviously then repeat these. There are repeats. Just wanted to save time during a video. I don't want to make it twice as long, just doing those repeats. But guys, this is a great page. If um, You know, it's a great little warm-up. You know, pick a random one of these and pick a note, and that's how you can warm up. Or if you get bored sometime with a song that I, you know, I'm having you play in your book and need a little variety, play, pick a note and play some of these rhythm studies. So there you go. It's good to review our rhythms. Happy practicing.